Yo, what's up viewers of the tube? My name is Tyler of Chico Crypto and welcome to another episode of Crypto and a Cold One. Today's guest is Two Hats, um, crisp light beer. It's light beer with a hint of natural pineapple. So I don't know how this is gonna go. It's pretty good. Oh, that's gross. Not good at all. So today is going to be a chill episode, going over some general crypto news for a few of my favorite projects, as well as taking a look at a new project. So let's begin with a coin I haven't talked about in a while, Walton or Walton Chain. So Walton has been moving on their product quickly. The mainnet and Walton wallet is out and running and anyone with a mining rig can start mining Walton right now on the Walton main chain. So I want to clarify some things for some people. The token swap for Walton has not happened yet. So the Walton coins, which are ERC20 tokens, are the WTC tokens. The tokens that are mined on the main chain are WTCT tokens, which are basically Walton tokens that will be converted one for one into Walton tokens once the swap takes place and the main chain is considered fully stable. So Walton has a Guardian Masternode status. This was given to people who held 5,000 Walton before the snapshot was taken on April 8th. Currently, if you have a mining rig, you can set up your Walton wallet and begin mining. Here is a breakdown of the rewards for each mining status you can have. A normal wallet account, which will be awarded the normal 2 WTCT for the successful mining of a block. There is a Masternode account which will hold 5,000 or more Walton coin after the April 8th snapshot will earn 2 plus 1 WTCT for each successful mining of a block. And of course there is a Guardian Masternode wallet. They will earn 2 plus 1 WTCT for the successful mining of each block. And upon the token swap, an additional WTCT will be awarded per mine block. So if you have your Guardian Masternode status confirmed on the Ethereum address through the snapshot, you will need to create a Walton wallet to be confirmed as the Guardian status to be eligible for the above mentioned Guardian rewards. To do this, you need to send a zero Ethereum transaction to the address provided by the Walton Chain team from your Ethereum wallet that has the Masternode status confirmed. So in the bottom data field, you need to enter your WTCT address on the mainnet to receive your 5,000 WTCT and that wallet will be confirmed as a Guardian Masternode and you will receive those rewards. So what about some Walton news? Well, a new child chain has just been found out. No official release from the Walton team, but a Chinese news article has revealed just who the child chain is. The project is called Morgan chain and it will allow people to verify food products through the blockchain. They are focusing on traceability of food products especially from agriculture and they will have grandchildren chains on top of them. Now the entire article was written all in Chinese and I couldn't find a website or anything regarding more information for Morgan chain. But guess what Masternode and Guardian Masternode holders we get some of these tokens airdropped to us. The token distribution for Morgan Chain hasn't been revealed, but I would expect it to follow a similar distribution as the first child chain, Friar Chain. Oh, that's so gross. Oh, I forgot to add this too. Whoops. So now let's talk about an exchange coin that is coming out soon that isn't on top of too many people's radar. The coin is Mandala Exchange. Now I'm a big fan of decentralized exchanges and think they are the future of crypto trading, but that future is still a ways off. There is a gap in the marketplace right now with most centralized exchanges feeling the hurt of demand leading to poor user interfaces and poor user experiences. This is the gap that Mandala is trying to fit, creating a clean, secure, and straightforward trading platform that will be easy for new investors to get involved with while providing the performance for seasoned traders. The trading engine Mandala is creating is putting other exchanges to shame. In recent stress tests, the engine is capable of pushing 10 million transactions per second with virtually no latency. Binance only does 1.4 million and Bitfinex and KuCoin only do 2 million. Hold up Tyler, you may be asking yourself, this is a centralized exchange. Where the fuck is the security at? Well, this is what makes Mandala unique. They will be creating and integrating their own hardware wallet, which will connect directly to the exchange. 
The wallet will also harness fingerprint technology, allowing users to seamlessly log into the exchange with their wallets. By integrating cold storage wallets directly into the exchange, it brings a new layer of security while still having the benefits of a centralized trade engine. What I like about this exchange is they are going to be based in the United States and they are specializing in SEC compliance and they are working towards working directly with government agencies to help pave the way for mass adoption and legitimacy. To remain compliant, Mandala is utilizing Reg S from the Securities Act exemption, which will allow an initial investment round for international contributors. They are also filing a Reg A plus Tier 1 public offering exemption, which will allow the unrestricted trading of MDX tokens that are distributed during the crowd sale. So once the exchange launches, all US people will be legally allowed to purchase and utilize MDX tokens. This is a good thing, as in the future, many exchanges operating today may be forced to shut down or halt trading until they comply with regulatory measures set place by the SEC. So the project is in pre-sale right now and has already reached its soft cap. So if any non-US people want to get involved, check it out. Oops, I forgot about this. Add this. So now, moving on to a project I joked about last week, saying their mainnet was one of the top five most anticipated. And that coin is Pied Piper Coin. So a team actually launched a Pied Piper Coin and they did an airdrop for the coins. Anyone who signed up for it through a Google form received an airdrop of 750 Pied Piper Coins. Well, boy howdy, look what is happening to the price of Pied Piper. Consistent day after day gains. I remember when it first came out, it was just seven cents. Just like the Silicon Valley TV show. Now we've reached a high of $1.30 USD, but it has since came back down to $1.11 USD. That means the airdrop is worth nearly $1,000. But wait, airdrop holders, don't think about dumping. Chico Crypto has a prediction of just where this Pied Piper coin is going to hit. In the season finale of Silicon Valley, the coin on the show hit $2.51 USD. This all just makes sense. The coin will pump up to these levels in the next few days. Probably will be near $1.75 tomorrow when this video drops. <sighs> Moving on to a coin who is aiming to do what Pied Piper jokingly is trying to do. Skycoin. So I've highlighted Skycoin a few times on my channel and still hold my initial investment from months ago. Skycoin has some big news that dropped a couple of days ago. The Skywire testnet is up and running. What is Skywire? It's the new internet Skycoin is building. So Skywire has a revolutionary networking protocol based on multi-protocol label switching, which increases speed, quality, reliability, and security. The Skywire miner is the backbone of this new internet. It functions as a miner for Skycoins, a specialized VPN, and provides maximum power and performance for the Skywire protocol. With the Skywire and Miner, a local cache holds resources without connecting to the external internet. File downloads are copied directly into that local cache. Peers who are looking for that file can get it from you and pass it along the network to them. This is a peer-to-peer -peer technology which provides a viable alternative to the current internet. So what has this done to Skycoin's price? Well, it's green in a sea of red. Currently, one Skycoin is sitting just above $25 USD, an 11.36% increase from yesterday. Skycoin had a ton of FUD surrounding it um, a few months back, or about a month and a half ago back, and a release of a functioning test that is a middle finger to the haters' faces. Well, viewers, thanks for taking the time to watch this episode of Crypto and a Cold One. I'll be back tomorrow, and I'll hopefully have a better beer. See you then. Cheers.